Okay, I am ready for my announcements. If you all want to bring the inmates forward. Everyone stand, please. Young man. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to inform you, we are now streaming live on YouTube, so that way the public has access to uh, these proceedings. My name is Judge Ferry. I will be presiding over your first appearance this morning. If everyone can go ahead and raise their right hands. Do you swear and affirm that the statements that you'll give before this court and the statements contained within your application for a court appointed counsel is true and correct? If so, say I do and lower your hands. Okay, so listen carefully because I'm going to explain a few things to you all today about how your first appearance will take place. Um, as I mentioned, this is your first appearance before the Clayton County Magistrate Court. Keep in mind, we are not here to take a plea, nor are we here to try your case. We are here today because I am going to inform you of the charges against you. I'm going to advise you about certain rights that you have. I'm gonna tell you about uh, your bond and set bond on those offenses for which this court is authorized to set bond on. I will tell you about your preliminary hearing date uh, if necessary, and I will determine whether or not you will be um, qualified for a court appointed attorney. During this proceeding and all other proceedings, you do have the right to remain silent and say nothing. Should you give up this right, anything that you say during this proceeding can be used against you if this case goes to trial. During this proceeding and all other proceedings, you do have the right to the presumption of innocence until the state proves your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You do have the right to an indictment by grand jury for most felonies or accusation for misdemeanors. You have the right to a speedy and public trial by jury. You do have the right to see, hear, and cross-examine witnesses who are called to testify against you. You do have the right to compel the attendance of witnesses in your own behalf by subpoena. You have the right to testify and offer other evidence in your own defense should you choose to do so. However, should you choose not to do so, there will be no presumption of guilt raised against you. And you do have the right to have an attorney represent you during your proceedings. I wanna to talk to you all about bonds and the different options. Uh, oftentimes I have several questions that are asked of me about bond. So listen up because I'm going to explain bond to you. Some of you will be allowed to post what is called an unrestricted bond in order for you to be released from jail here today. This bond may come in three different forms. The first one is a cash bond. If you decide to use a cash bond, Whatever bond amount that I tell you you have to pay, you can pay that amount in full using cash and you can pay that to the sheriff's office, plus any fees that the sheriffs may tack on to that bond amount. The, the sheriff's office will hold that cash bond. And then once your case has been uh, finally adjudicated and disposed of, the cash bond will be returned to the person who posted it. That's the first option. The second option is you can use what is called a commercial bond. So if you don't have the full amount of the bond to pay in cash, you can use a commercial bond. The commercial bond uh, will be posted using a commercial bonding company that is approved by the sheriff's office. These are private companies who charge different fees for to post the bond for you. The court system has nothing to do with the commercial bond, okay? So I don't know much about what takes place with the commercial bond, but what I can tell you is that most bonding companies will charge you a certain percentage of your bond amount to post that bond for you. I don't know what the percentage is. Uh, it's usually up to 15%. So for example, if I tell you that your bond is $1,000 and you choose to use a commercial bonding company, the uh, commercial bonding company can charge you up to 15% of that amount, which means you will have to pay approximately $150 to get out of jail if you go through a commercial bonding company. So keep that in mind. Once you pay the fee to the commercial bonding company though, that's the fee for their service. So you do not get that money back. 
The third option is a property bond. You, if, if you decide to use a property bond, you will have to find someone that has equity in their home that, uh, or net equity that's at least three times the total bond amount. So using my example again, if your bond is $1,000 and you decide to use a property bond, uh, that means you'll have to find someone who has a home with net equity in it of at least $3,000, which is three times the $1,000 bond amount that I mentioned. Those are your three bond options. So you need to be thinking about uh, what you're gonna do here today with regards to your bond. Now, some of you are gonna have what is called special conditions on your bond. The special conditions may prohibit you from contacting certain people or going to or around certain places. Now, if I tell you that you are to have no contact with someone, that means no um, direct contact or indirect. You have to stay away from them. You cannot contact that person by mail, email, um, telephone. Uh, you can't contact them through a third person, nor can you contact that person on social media. So if I say stay away, that's what I mean by stay away. Now, some of you all will not be able to return to a particular location as well as a special condition to your bond. If I say you cannot return to that location, that means you cannot go on those premises. Now, if you reside at that location, make sure you inform me of that. For the most part, um, I will know whether or not you reside there, but if you reside at that location, make sure that you inform me of that because what I will do is, and I'll, I will allow you to go back to that location to retrieve any of your personal belongings so long as you are accompanied by a sheriff. And that has to take place within 10 days of being released, okay? But otherwise you are not to go back to that location. Uh, now, if you violate any of the special orders or excuse me, special conditions of your bond, your bond can be revoked and you will not be entitled to another bond while you wait for your trial. Also, there could be an additional charge of aggravated stalking, influencing a witness, or any other charges that the law may provide. Those charges could be brought against you, um, and you could be sentenced up to 10 years in prison and or fined up to $20,000. For any family members who are going to assist you in posting bond, um, they, will provide, they will be provided with your bond information after we have concluded the first appearance hearing today. Uh, however, if that family member, like a um, fiance or a spouse, if that family member is the victim that's listed on the warrant, then, uh, and there's a special condition that you are not to have contact with that family member, that family member will not be able to post the bond for you. You will have to find someone else. Some of you are charged with offenses for which um, this court is not authorized by law to set a bond for you. In this event, um, I will schedule a separate bond hearing date for you and you will appear before a superior court judge and I will tell you what that date is at that time. So I may not be able to set bond for you here today. Um, there will just be a separate hearing date where the issue of bond can be determined. And I'll let you know one by one as you come before me. Um, if you are currently on active probation, um, this court may not be authorized to set a bond for you. It just depends on the circumstances. We will give your probation officer an opportunity to decide if he or she will file a warrant to revoke your probation. And this is typically done during your preliminary hearing. So the preliminary hearing um, is a separate court hearing from today. The preliminary hearing is known as a probable cause hearing. The purpose of the preliminary hearing is to determine whether there is enough evidence or enough probable cause to justify keeping you detained on your charges until such time that your case goes to trial. Now, if you bond out of jail, your preliminary hearing date is going to be automatically waived, meaning it's going to be canceled and you'll receive a new court date in the mail. So I will give each of you a preliminary hearing date. Um, if for some reason you want you you want to waive your preliminary hearing date and you're only charged with misdemeanors, let me know um, and I'll have you sign a waiver to waive your preliminary hearing date. Um, but if you waive your preliminary hearing date, it does not affect your right to be able to post bond here today. 
Uh, it also does not affect your right to have an attorney appointed to represent you if you qualify for one. And it also does not affect your right to a jury trial. Um, I am going to be giving you all several um, dates. For those of you that are charged with misdemeanors only, your preliminary hearing date is going to be June 15th. For those of you that are charged with felonies only, only excuse me, or if you're charged with a felony and a misdemeanor, I'm gonna give you a court date of June 14th. If I tell you, you do not have a bond, you will also receive a second court date. That's the bond hearing date that I mentioned to you all. And that bond hearing date will be June 18th. Okay, so I am going to call each of you up uh, one by one. We're gonna start with the ladies. And the first person that I have on my list is Letitia Calhoun. Good morning. Are you Letitia Calhoun? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Ms. Calhoun, you have been charged with one uh, count of criminal damage in the second degree. I have set your bond amount at $3,000. Do you understand your charge and your bond amount? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I am placing a special condition on here um, to stay away from Richard Floyino. Um, do you understand that condition? Yes, but we have kids together and I live at the house. Okay, so uh, based, based on the actual um, allegations, I'm just going to leave that condition in here that you cannot have contact with Mr. Floyino. Um, I want to make sure I preserve the peace, but the house that you're referring to, is that 992 Boca Raton Drive? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what I can do is I can um, indicate on here that you can go back to the property to retrieve some of your personal belongings. Um, and this condition will be in place until your case is resolved or until this condition is modified. Um, so you can certainly get the condition modified. You would just have to either go through your attorney um, or if you plan on representing yourself, you can contact the prosecutor's office to let them know you you uh, would like to modify the condition if Mr. Flayino agrees. Uh, do you plan to represent yourself, hire an attorney, or you want me to consider you for a court-appointed attorney? I just represent myself. Okay, I, I see you did complete an application for a court-appointed attorney, uh, but you did not list an income. So did you want to be considered for a court appointed attorney? No. Okay. So I'm gonna indicate on here that you plan to uh, represent yourself. Um, your preliminary hearing date is going to be scheduled for June 15th at 8.30 a.m. in courtroom um, 204. Um, it may be possible that we'll be having um, a Zoom video conference hearing on that date, um, but if you bond out, that date will be waived and you'll receive a new court notice in the mail. Um, because I do have that special condition on here about um, staying away from Mr. Floyino and you not being able to go back to that residence, just make sure that you, um, update the court with your new address so that way you don't miss your new court date in the mail. Okay. Do you have any questions for me, Ms. Calhoun? Is that a no? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. You can be excused. Have a good day. The next person I have on my list is, um, Ms. Daniels. Good morning. Um, are you Ms. Daniels? Yes, I am. Okay. Ms. Daniels, you have been charged with one count of criminal damage in a second degree. Okay. 
Uh, your bond amount has been set at $3,000. Do you understand you're charging your bond amount? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I do have a special condition to your um, bond. You are to stay away from China McDowell. I understand she's your sister, but you are to stay away and not have any contact. And I am not allowing you to go back to the house at 918 Hanover Circle in Stockbridge. Do you understand those conditions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you want to be considered for a court appointed attorney or do you plan on hiring your own attorney? Um, is that like a public defender? Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, I'll do that. Okay, let me review your application. Okay, so you do qualify. So I am going to appoint an attorney to represent you. I am scheduling your preliminary hearing date for June 15, 2021. If you bond out, that date will be automatically waived and you'll receive a new court date in the mail. Do you believe you'll be able to make bond? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, well, if there's nothing further, ma'am, you may be excused. Um, I'm also from out of state. I'm from California. Um, okay, what's your what's your question? Nothing. I was just letting you guys know. Okay. Well, when you um, when you receive contact with your uh, court appointed attorney, talk to your court appointed attorney about that because they'll be able to advise you if there are any issues that may arise with you uh, being out of state okay thank you you're welcome have a good day you too thank you all right the next person i have is miss tyrika vaughn good morning miss vaughn good morning okay um you have been charged with several offenses um, there's a window tent violation, obstruction of an officer, uh, possession of a controlled substance, um, obstruction of your license tag, fleeing from a police officer, reckless conduct, reckless driving, driving on a suspended license, violation of the child restraint, and cruelty to children in the second degree. Um, based on a warrantless affidavit, arrest affidavit, I did dismiss the driving on a suspended license charge for insufficient probable cause. Um, for the other charges, your total bond is $20,000. Do you understand those charges and your bond amount? Yes. Do you believe you'll be able to make bond? Yes. Okay. Are you uh, requesting a court-appointed attorney, ma'am? No, I'll get my own attorney. Okay. Okay, so because one of your charges is a felony charge, that was the fleeing from the police officer, your preliminary hearing date is going to be scheduled for June 14th, 2021. But if you bond out, that hearing date will be waived and you'll receive a new hearing date in the mail. Um, and I've indicated on here that you will hire your own attorney. Okay. Do you have any questions for me, Ms. Vaughn? Um, uh, you said you'll waive my date and like how long would it be before it be weekend? Like how long would it be like... <sighs> You said June 14th, and if I bond out, it'll be waived. So I should see how long it will be waived for, like, what is the mid estimated time? I have no idea. Um, that's something you will have to contact the clerk's office about because I don't handle the scheduling after that. That's when your case goes beyond me. So you'll have to contact the courts and stay um, in touch, but they will send you a new notice in the mail anyway. Okay. okay. All right. So have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think that's it for the females. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, Deputy Wilkins. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. 
Okay, are we ready on the male side? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so it looks like the first person I have on my list is Mr. Butler. Ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, good morning, Mr. Butler. Good morning, y'all. Um, I, okay, so I, I, I have three charges for you, sir. Um, the first one is a, a battery family violence. The bond amount on that is $6,000, um, but I do want to let you know, based on your criminal history, uh, I am upgrading that charge from a misdemeanor to a felony. So it is being charged as a felony. The second charge that you have is reckless conduct, and that bond amount is $7,500. And the third charge that you have is possession of a firearm by a felon. Um, and that bond amount is $15,000. Okay. So your total, hang on, hang on. Your total bond amount between all three of those charges is $28,500. Do you understand your charges and the bond amount? Yes, ma'am. Do you believe you'll be able to make bonds, sir? Yes, ma'am. I have the money. Okay. Do you plan on hiring your own attorney or did you want to be considered for a court appointed attorney? A court Is this correct that you say your income is 1500 a month? Yes, yes, okay. Yes. All right, so you do qualify. I'm going to approve you and grant your request for a court appointed attorney. I have scheduled your preliminary hearing date for um, June 4th, 2021. As I mentioned earlier, if you bond out, that court date will be waived and you'll receive a new notice in the mail. Uh, do you have any questions, Mr. Butler? No, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank I'm sorry. You. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Have a good day. Okay, the next person I have is, are you Mr. Jose Cisneros? Your Honor, Mr. Adolph Davis. Oh, okay. Give me one moment. Let me get to your file. Yes. Okay, well, that explains why I didn't see a bond order. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Davidson, um, you have been charged with a DUI. That bond amount is $5,000. Obstruction of an officer. That bond amount is $2,500. Improper lane change, $500, and open container. That bond amount is $500. So your total bond is $8,500. Do you understand the charges and the bond amount? Yeah, yes, you are. Do you believe you'll be able to make bond? I should be. I, I, I get retirement and because of COVID, uh, it has been kind of slow. But, uh, and then I got, I got, I failed. Can you make bond? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, are you requesting to be considered for a court appointed attorney, sir? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I have reviewed your application and you do qualify. So I am appointing an attorney to represent you. Uh, all of your charges are misdemeanor charges. So your preliminary hearing date is going to be scheduled for June 15th um, in courtroom 204. So if you bond out, that court date will be waived and you will receive a new court notice in the mail. Do you have any other questions for me, sir? Um, I was just trying to see if we could reduce it a little. I know it's not, but I just gave a seven mile and I just caught it COVID. And I was just trying to see if we could reduce it a little. No, sir. Um, just based on the details of this warrantless affidavit, I'm not inclined to reduce it. As I mentioned earlier, you know, you could go through a bonding company. Bonding companies, um, you know, because of their pandemic and they understand the financial circumstances that uh, 
people are experiencing because of the pandemic, they may be able to work out something. Sometimes they have payment plans. I don't know, um, but I am not inclined to reduce it at this time. Um, you, I have appointed an attorney to represent you. So if for some reason um, you're not able to bond out, definitely talk to your lawyer because your lawyer can you know, file motions with the court to have us reconsider the bond. But at this, at this juncture here today, I'm not inclined to reduce it, okay? All right, you may be excused. Tracy Finley. Uh, you said Tracy Finley? Yes. Okay, good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, you've been charged with uh, DUI. That bond is $5,000. Open container, that bond is $500. Following too closely, that bond is $500. And driving while license suspended, that bond amount is $1,500. So your total bond between your charges is $7,000. $500. Do you understand your charges and your bond, sir? Yes. Do you believe you'll be able to make bond? Yes. Okay. Are you requesting a court appointed attorney? Yes. Okay, I've reviewed your application. You do qualify, so I am granting your request. Um, because you're charged with all misdemeanors, your preliminary hearing date is going to be scheduled for June 15th, um, 2021 in courtroom 204. If you bond out, that court date will be waived and you'll receive a new court notice in the mail. Do you have any questions, Mr. Finley? No, ma'am. Okay, you may be excused. Have a good day. May I have your name, sir? Richard. Okay. So, sir, you have been charged with one count of battery, um, family violence. Your bond amount is $5,000. Do you understand your charge and your bond amount? Yes, ma'am. Um, I have set special conditions on here. You cannot have contact with Letitia Calhoun. I understand you all have a child together, but you can't have any contact with her while this bond is in place. You also are not to return to 742 Mount Zion Road in Jonesboro, Georgia. Um, mm -hmm. Is that a shared residence? No, it's not, it's not a residence. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, think it's I, I, I can't hear you. Yeah, I think it's like a gas station. Oh, okay, so that's not a residence at all. Okay, all right, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, but you are to have no contact with Miss Calhoun. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you say you'll be, be able to make bond? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you uh, want to be considered for a court-appointed attorney? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hang on. I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask questions at the end. So let me make sure I get all the information from you that I need. I'm reviewing your application and you do qualify. So I am going to appoint an attorney to represent you. Um, your court date is going to be scheduled for June 15th, 2021 in courtroom 204. Now, what questions did you have for me, sir? Uh, uh, the day the incident happened, we had uh, uh, the, the, the case. Yeah. So let me, let me stop you before you get into it. Remember at the beginning, I mentioned that we're not gonna try your case today um, because we don't have any witnesses here. We don't have a jury here. We don't have the state here. So um, unfortunately the information you share with me is not uh, relevant to the proceedings here today. That's something you need to discuss with the lawyer that I just appointed to represent you. So just keep in mind, I don't want you to say anything that could be hurtful to your case because these proceedings um, are being recorded. All right. Now, did you have any questions about the court appointed attorney, your charge or your bond amount? No, no Okay. Well, you may be excused, sir. Have a good day. Green. Green is the last name? Uh-huh. No. 
Okay, Mr. Green, um, you have been charged with uh, one count of armed robbery, one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and possession of a firearm. Um, I am denying bond on all three charges today. Um, do you understand what you've been charged with? No. Okay, so I am gonna set a separate bond hearing date for you. That date is going to be June 18th. So on June 18th, at that time, you will be able to um, address the issue of bond and another judge can determine whether or not bond will be granted at that time. Uh, I am granting your request to have a, an attorney represent you. I've reviewed your uh, application for a court appointed attorney. So your attorney will be in contact with you. Uh, I have also scheduled your preliminary hearing date for June 14th. So on June 14th, um, you will be brought up before the court and they would determine whether or not that there is enough probable cause to keep you detained. And then on June 18th, you'll be brought up, uh, if you're still detained, you'll be brought up before the court. And during that hearing, they will address the issue of bond at that time. Um, do you understand everything I've just mentioned to you? No. Yes or no? Yes or no. Okay. All right, did you have any questions, Mr. Green? No, no. Okay, well, you may be excused. Have a good day. Okay. Last name Peters? Uh, last name Knowles Peters. Knowles Peters, okay. Oh, this is um this is the fugitive. Can we save him for last, Deputy Burley? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. May I have your name? Jamie Lopez. Mr. Lopez? Yes. Okay. Mr. Lopez, you've been charged with following too closely. That bond is $500. Driving on a suspended license, that bond is $1,500. And distracted driving, that bond is $1,000. So your total bond amount is $3,000. Do you understand the charges in your bond? Do you believe you'll be able to make bond? Okay. Do you want to be considered for a court appointed attorney? Yes. Okay. okay. I've reviewed your application. I am granting your request, so I am appointing an attorney to represent you. I am, I am scheduling your preliminary hearing date for June 15th um, at 8.30 a.m. in courtroom 204. If you bond out, Mr. Lopez, that court date will be waived and we'll send you a new court date in the mail. Okay, do you have any questions for me, sir? Okay, you may be excused, have a good day. Yeah, how you doing, Your Honor? Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Darion Mitchell. Hey, Mr. Mitchell, you have one charge of battery. Um, that bond is $5,000. Do you understand the charge and the bond amount? Yeah. Do you believe you'll be able to make bond? Yeah. I'm sorry? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, Okay, and I do have special conditions. You are to stay away and have no contact with Kristen Cordero Rojas. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. And you cannot return to 1243 Old Tony Road in Conley, Georgia. Is um, that a shared residence? No, actually, that's where my house is. And she has, she stays in Heron County. So, like, she doesn't be there. She was our mama. Uh, Hang on, let me see. One, give me one second. Cause I'm the one who's staying here in county. She stays in here in county. I heard you, sir. Hold on one moment, okay? Okay. 
Okay, so it's indicated on here um, that you all share that residence, that address. So I am not inclined to, to remove this condition. Um, if for some reason she doesn't live there, you know, the, the idea is for you all to stay apart. That's the goal for you all to stay separate and apart. Okay. If she has moved out, um, then I'm not going to prohibit you from going back there, but I am going to leave this condition on this bond because I understand what you're telling me, but I also see something different in the paperwork. All right. Um, did you want to be considered for a court appointed attorney? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me take a look at your application. Are you unemployed? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm gonna appoint an attorney to represent you. Mr. Mitchell, uh, I strongly advise that you talk to your attorney before you um, go back and start occupying that residence because I don't want it to be a situation where you're saying she doesn't live there and she says she does and she's present and then you end up violating this bond because if you violate it, um, your bond is gonna be revoked. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, your preliminary hearing date is scheduled for June 15th, 2021. Um, if you do bond out, that court date will be waived and you'll receive a new notice in the mail. Do you have any questions for me, Mr. Mitchell? No, Okay, you may be excused, have a good one. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, may I have your name? Last name Sanders. Okay. Hey, Okay, Mrs. Um, Sanders, so you have been charged with all misdemeanor charges. Um, criminal trespass, that bond is 3,000. No tail light, that bond is 500. Uh, failure to have your headlight on, that bond is 500. Uh, concealing the ID of a motor vehicle that's hiding the tag, that bond is 500. Obstruction of um, law enforcement, um, that's being charged as a mis misdemeanor as well, excuse me, that bond is 2,500. Um, so your total bond amount between all of these charges is $7,000. Do you understand the charges and the bond amount? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do you believe um, you'll be able to make bond? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now I do see that you um, may be on active probation, it looks like. Um, at least until next year, uh, but because you're, hang on, I'm going to ask you about any comments and statements when I get done. Okay. So hold that thought. Um, it looks like you may be on active probation, um, but because you're charged with all misdemeanors, I am setting a bond amount, but I cannot say that there won't be a probation hold. Yes, now, what did you, what did you want to say in regards to that? Um, I'm sorry to, to I mean, what I was going to say was, for the criminal trespass, I know it might be like a special requirement for that, but I have a, I have an ankle monitor for that. You get what I'm saying? Like I'm on I'm on house arrest for that place. So How long have you been on house arrest? I've been on house arrest since last September in Coweta County. Since September 2020. Yes, ma'am. I have an ankle monitor on my leg still, and that's what the big that's what the big uh, confusion was about because when the officer pulled up. He, would, he hit me with criminal trespass instead of like, um, it was just like an argument. That's all it really was. But like I was trying to tell him, I mean, tell her before they end up putting out the warning and everything, because like, she was trying to get it fixed. 
she was trying to get it taken away because I stay there. I can't be nowhere else but there. That's that's my that's what my okay. ex mom did assigned for. I'm sorry. Well, let me t let me tell you the basis of the criminal trespass because criminal trespass can be brought um, a couple of different ways. Um, so it says that you intentionally damaged the property of Brandy Fleming without the consent of the property owner and the damage there too is $500 or less. Um, by breaking the living room window within the residence valued at $150 and breaking the car windshield of the vehicle, which was a, a Scion XB that belonged to Brandy Fleming valued at $250. And it mentioned that you all are parents of a five-month-old child. So criminal trespass, I know in the regular common sense, people think that it means um, a residence going on a particular property, but it also means depriving someone of their property, which is depriving her of the, the window that was broken. So that's why you were charged with criminal trespass. However, I do have a special conditions to your bond, which is to stay away from Brandy Fleming um, and also, I do have this condition about you not being able to return to that apartment. That's the 296 Roy Huey Road, apartment 8D in Riverdale, Georgia. Um, is that the location that you're referring to? Do you have an attorney uh, representing you? Right now, no, ma'am, I don't. Are you asking for a court-appointed attorney or do you plan to hire your... Okay, so let me take a look at your application. Um, I messed up on the application. Yeah, because it says you put thirty six thousand a month. I didn't mean that. I mean to put three thousand six hundred. And for her, it's the same thing. I put forty something instead. Mm -hmm. So it it just no, it just asked for her monthly income as well on the paper. I put forty instead of four. Okay, you're talking about your spouse. Yes, ma'am. That's Brandy Fleming. That's my wife. Okay, I understand. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grant your request. I'm gonna grant your request with regards to having a court appointed attorney. Um, did you say you think you'll be able to bond out? I will. I already, okay. I'm not, I already talked to probation and they're, they're, they're gonna take that hold up off me. So all I have to do is pay this and I'm on that bond. Okay, you need to talk to probation too about that ankle monitor or your court appointed attorney and the condition that I have on here. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to work that out for you. Um, but because of what I have in front of me, I'm just gonna leave that on the bond order. But your preliminary hearing date is being scheduled for June 15th, um, 2021 in courtroom 204. But if you bond out like you believe you'll be able to, then that court date will be waived and you'll receive a new notice in the mail. You said um, to to How much again? 7000 Yes, your bond, your total bond amount between all the charges is $7,000. Thank you. Okay. Do you have any other questions, Mr. Sanders? I'm out. All right. You may be excused, sir. Have a good day. May I have your name? Terry Jacquez. Terry is Jacquez? Okay. All right, so Mr. Jacquez, um, you've been charged with aggravated assault by strangulation. I am denying bond at this stage. Um, I'm scheduling a bond hearing date for you for June 18th, 2021. So you can have that issue of bond uh, discussed at that time. I'm also scheduling your preliminary hearing date for June 14th, 2021. Um, and during that time, if you are still um, detained and there hasn't been a consent bond, then you will be brought before the court and they'll determine whether or not there's enough probable cause to keep you detained. Um, I have reviewed your application for a court appointed attorney. I am granting your request. So I am appointing an attorney to represent you in these proceedings. Do you understand um, everything I've just mentioned to you? I can't hear you. I do. Okay. Do you have any questions of me, Mr. Jacquez? Okay. You may be excused, sir. Thank you. Ricky Tom.
Okay, good morning, Mr. Thomas. You've been charged with one count of battery family violence. Uh, that bond is set at $5,000. You also have three uh, cruelty to children in the third degree charges. They are being charged as felonies. Um, the bond on each of those is $3,000. So your total bond amount is $14,000. Do you understand your charges and your bond amounts? Yes. Do you believe you'll be able to make bond? Uh, $14,000, what is that? Like, what's the percentage of it? Um, the quick math, all I can tell you is 10% of that is 1400, but, um, so somewhere 1400 and more, maybe between 1400 and 2000 is probably what you're going to have to pay a bonding company to get out. Yeah. So you, do you believe you'll be able to make bond? Yeah. I do have special conditions to your bond, Mr. Thomas. You are to stay away and have no contact with Kayla Clark. Um, also, I am not allowing you to return to 943 Sherwood Circle in Forest Park. Do you understand those conditions? Yes. Um, is that a shared residence? Do you live there? Uh, yes. Okay, so do you need to go back and retrieve some belongings? No, I have my mother bring out my stuff. Okay. Um, well, just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, at least indicate on here that you're allowed to do so if things change. So once you bond out, you'll have at least 10 days uh, from being released from the jail to schedule an appointment with the sheriff's office. So that way you can go back and retrieve any personal belongings. Are you requesting the assistance of a court appointed attorney? Yes, I need one. Okay, I am approving your application and I am appointing an attorney to represent you. Um, your preliminary hearing date is being scheduled for uh, June 14th, because you do have some felony charges in here. Um, if you do bond out, that court date will be waived and you'll receive a new notice in the mail. Just make sure you uh, contact the court to update your address since you cannot return to the Sherwood Circle property, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions for me? Oh, All right, you may be excused. Have a good day. Thanks. You're welcome. Tell your name. Okay, good morning, Mr. Williams. You've been charged with uh, one count of battery, simple battery, family violence. Your bond is set at $6,000. Do you understand the charge and the bond amount? Yes, ma'am. Um, either way, I can do it. Hang, hang on, let me tell you the rest of it because you may have more questions, all right? So hold on a second. Um, you are to stay away as a condition of the bond, stay away and have no contact with Venetia or Venetia Williams. I am also indicating that you cannot return to 719 South Avenue in Forest Park. Um, is that a shared residence? Um, yeah, we, we ran a room for you. Okay, so if you did live there or you do live there, I will state on your bond that you are allowed to return with the sheriff to retrieve any of your, your personal belongings that are not in dispute. And you will have 10 days from being released to do that. Do you believe you'll be able to make bond, Mr. Williams? Well, now, I'm trying to say that I just got my collarbone. Me and my wife just had an accident. I just got my collarbone, so I haven't been working. So I'm trying to get you brought to like 3000 I can make bond on that. And my wife has mental health. And y'all already know this. All this, I got the paperwork. The thing. I'm sorry, what is your, <laughs> Miss, Mr. Williams, what is your question? I'm so I just put my collar on and I haven't been working that much. Did you say, I'm sorry, it's hard to understand what you're saying with the mask. Um, you said, can I lower the bond? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I haven't been working. The last couple of weeks because I put my collar on the last Sir, at this point, just based on your history, uh, your criminal history, I'm not going to lower that bond amount. 
Now, that is not to say that it can't be lowered in the future. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grant your request for a court-appointed attorney. Um, and that court-appointed attorney, you can talk to him or her about filing to modify bond. Um, but at this point, sir, I am not inclined to do that. Not at this stage. Um, I am scheduling your preliminary hearing date for June 15th. So if you are still detained um, on June 15th, you will at least be able to come before the court to determine whether or not enough probable cause ex exists to keep you detained. Um, do you have any questions uh, for me, sir? No. Okay, you may be excused, Mr. Williams. Hey. How are you my name is Dexter Lowe, and it's got Lorenzo Walker on my name tag. I guess that's an alias name. I don't know what they got in the system. You say your name is Lorenzo Walker? That's an a alias from years ago. My name is Dexter Lowe. So I don't know what should be on my name tag. I don't know what you see or what's in the system. I don't know if they booked me under the alias or my real name or what. I don't know. Okay, so you said Lorenzo Allen Walker, that's an alias that? Yes. Okay, that was the alias that you used years ago? You said? Yes. Okay. All right, well, I do have the... the warrantless arrest affidavit listed as Dexter. Is it Dexter or Dexter? D-E-X-T-E-R, Dexter, Lowe. Okay, it's, it's misspelled on that too. D-E-X-T-E-R, Dexter yes. Antonio Lowe? Yes. Okay, all right, let me indicate that on here as well. Okay, Mr. Lowe, so you have been um, charged with canceled registration. Uh, that bond amount is $1,500. Possession of marijuana, less than an ounce. That bond is $1,500. Um, possession of crack cocaine, that bond amount, um, that's a felony offense. That bond amount is $5,000 use or possession of drug related objects, that bond is $500. So your total bond amount is $8,500. Do you understand the charges in your bond amount, sir? Yeah, yeah, one question. Do it's you possible. believe, hang on, hold on. Do you believe you'll be able to make bond? Yes. Okay, what's your question? He charged me with possession of crack cocaine. I never saw it. <laughs> I didn't have any. Mr. Walker, you said you had a question. What is your question, sir? Why are you charging me with crack cocaine? So okay. So what I can do is I can read out loud the details um, that were listed on the warrantless arrest affidavit. Do you want me to read that out loud, sir, so you can understand why you were charged with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It says that on April 23rd, 2021 in Clayton County, Georgia, the accused was found to be operating a green in color 1999 Honda CRV with license tag PEX1975. The tag was run through NCIC GCIC to check for registration and insurance status. The system returned showing the vehicle to have canceled registration and valid insurance. A traffic stop was initiated using emergency equipment. Upon contact with the accused, an odor of burnt marijuana, based on knowledge and experience, was detected coming from inside of the vehicle. A probable cause search of the vehicle was conducted and a small plastic bag containing less than one ounce of suspected marijuana was located next to the front driver's seat. Along with the small bag of suspected marijuana, there was a burnt end of a hand rolled cigarette that smelled of burnt marijuana. Based on knowledge and experience, 
based on knowledge and experience, located in an ashtray cup on the driver's side floorboard. Further search revealed two glass pipes commonly used to smoke illicit substances located in the center console and an additional glass pipe was located in the rear seat inside of a black cloth bag. A small white color rock-like substance was located underneath the front driver's seat that is suspected to be crack cocaine based on knowledge and experience. A black and color digit Z brand scale was located in the front dash pocket. An additional digit Z brand scale was located in the glove box of the vehicle. Both scales had a green residue that smelled of marijuana based on knowledge and experience on the weighing surface. So those are the statements made by the officer. Um, I don't want you to respond because I don't want you to say anything that can hurt your case, uh, but certainly discuss this with your attorney and your attorney can um, let you know the best defenses that you will have. Are you requesting to be um, considered for a court appointed attorney? Uh, what, ma'am? Are you requesting a court appointed yeah. attorney? Yeah. Okay. All right. And you said you're unemployed? Ma'am? Is I'm confirming that you are unemployed, is that right? Okay, I am granting your request. You will have an attorney appointed to represent you, Mr. Lowe. Uh, I have scheduled your preliminary hearing date for June 14th, 2021 in courtroom 204. Um, did you say you'll be able to make bond? Yes. Okay, do you have any other questions for me, sir? No, ma'am. Okay, you may be excused. Have a good day. Cameron White. Okay, good morning, Mr. White. Can you stand back just a little bit so I can see your face? Okay, so Mr. White, you've been charged with several offenses. Um, improper stopping, driving um, on a suspended license. Um, you have possession of methamphetamine charge, uh, possession of MDMA charge, possession of marijuana less than an ounce, uh, possession of drug related objects, open container violation, and driving with no insurance. Um, your total bond amount between all of those offenses is $15,500. Uh, do you understand those charges and your bond amount? Mm -hmm. Do you believe you'll be able to make bond, Mr. White? Mm -hmm. You said yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I've reviewed your application for a court-appointed attorney. You do qualify for a court-appointed attorney, so I am granting an attorney to represent you in these proceedings. Your preliminary hearing date is going to be set for June 14th. If you bond out, that court date will be waived and you'll receive a new notice in the mail. You have any questions for me, sir? No. Okay, you may be excused. Have a good day. Okay. All right, Mr. Peters. Um, Deputy Burley, is Walker um, bonded out? Yes, ma'am, he bonded out. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Mr. Knowles Peters, uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> so this hearing um, before me today is actually a extradition hearing. It is not a, um, 
uh, it's a hearing separate from what you've been hearing this morning, okay? Uh, essentially, all of the rights that I advised you of earlier still apply, but your hearing is just going to be a little different than the first appearance hearings. Now, you don't have any charges pending against you here in Clayton County. You have been brought to court today because you have charges pending against you in another state, and they are requesting that you return to that state to answer to those charges. So are, are you, in fact, um, Khalil Knowles Peters? Okay, speak a little louder for me. I can't hear you. Yeah, I am. Okay. All right. Do you have an attorney representing you in this matter? I can't hear you. I could get a court appointed attorney. I appreciate it. Okay. How much do you earn per month? I was working here in Fayetteville. I was getting about eleven hundred a month. Eleven hundred a month. Yeah, some, uh, restaurant business plus tips. So. Well, tips included making it 1100 a month. Okay. So I am going to grant your request for a court appointment counsel um, if you end up needing one. But let me tell you about what your rights are here today. Okay. So this hearing um, is being conducted pursuant to OCGA Title 17, Chapter 13. Um, as you have heard... Well, let me tell you exactly what you've been charged with. Um, it states that you are wanted by Madison County Sheriff's Office in Huntsville, Alabama for um, larceny. And that's warrant number GJ20190004488. Um, and that's being charged as a felony. You have a choice as to whether you wish to contest extradition or waive extradition and be returned to the other state uh, without going through the formal extradition process. Now, if you decide to contest extradition, the court may commit you to the Clayton County Jail for an initial period of 30 days. Now, during that time, there will be a warrant uh, prepared under the governor's signature for your extradition to the other state. The court may consider allowing you to post the bond, but the court is not required to allow bond in your case. And as you are wanted by another jurisdiction, I am not setting a bond in your case at this time. If you do not wish to voluntarily return to the state of Alabama, you may file a writ of habeas corpus to contest the extradition. Um, the writ of habeas corpus can only contest four things. The first thing is whether or not the extradition documents are in order on their face. The second thing that you can contest is whether you are charged with a crime that actually exists in the state of Alabama. The third thing that you can contest is whether you are the person named in the request for the extradition. And the fourth thing, the fourth thing that you can request is whether you are in fact a fugitive from justice. Those are the only four things that you can contest if you want to have an extradition hearing. Um, you cannot contest the issue of your guilt or innocence in this state because we don't have any charges pending um, against you in this state. Now you are entitled to the advice of counsel. Um, I have signed off and appointed an attorney to represent you should you need one here in Georgia. And you can have that advice of counsel uh, to help you contest the extradition or to help you decide whether you want to waive the extradition or contest it. Um, if the state is unable to extradite you within 30 days, you may be committed to the Clayton County Jail for an additional 60 days uh, waiting your extradition. Do you know um, what, at this time whether you wish to contest extradition or waive the formal extradition and voluntarily uh, return to the state of Alabama to answer to those charges? Okay, so you want to waive the um, extradition hearing? I, 
I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I would like for this to be over as soon as possible so they won't come collect me so I can answer to them and their, their state and everything. I'd like to get that done as soon as possible. Okay. So you're going to receive the waiver forms. Um, the share, uh, the deputies there will provide you with the waiver of extradition forms. Just make sure that you sign all of them. Um, and once it's signed, they'll send it back to me and I will go ahead and sign it. Um, and then the process will start from there. Okay. I just want to be sure, right? If I was to contest it, the only thing that would happen is I'd just be sitting in here until they came and got me anyway, correct? Yeah, you would um, sit a lot longer um, if you contested it. All right, there's no point in that. Let's just go ahead and get it over, please. Okay, so we're going to send you those waiver forms. Just sign it. Um, and once I get it back, I'll go ahead and sign it as well, and, and it'll start the process. Okay? All right, have a good day. Thank you. All right, Deputy Burley, are we done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, that is all. Thank you so much, sir. Have a good one. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good one. You're welcome. Bye.